The interlude between days 9 and 10 was dominated by the news of five further virus infections at Kokonoe Stable, including the master, and Ozeki Takakesho's withdrawal after a dreadful seventh defeat, apparently having twisted his ankle on day 3. Nothing changes with the former, those men have all been isolating anyway. But for the latter, it means an ungraceful belly flop from Yokozuna candidate to demotion threatened Ozeki. It happened to Kiseno Sato exactly seven years ago. Takakesho must hope for a similar recovery, but on a more modest skill set. With yet another match gone from a vastly reduced schedule, fans were hit by visions of endless salt throwing to ensure big spending NHK got to screen their big bouts, as usual, after 5.40. But something strange was in the chilly winter air today, producing an unusual number of close calls and judges' summits which easily filled in the time. The madness started in Division 4, with Tosa Eizan and Mochizuki. That one was deemed too close to call, so off they went again. And that one too was a dead heat. Another rematch. And that was like a junior literally filling in for a senior. Victor Tosa Ezan taking up the minutes of Takakesho, who left Saitama Sakai just as he joined. In Division 3 today, a very rare form of judges' conference, after Asanoyama's stablemate Asagyokuse charged into Ryuden's pal Shonan no Umi. The referee calls Asagyokuse back as his right didn't touch the ground but his head clearly touched his opponents. Does he look all right? The poor guy is concussed. Really concussed. But as this is sumo, there's no ringside doctor on hand to check him out. The referee thankfully thinks to check whether the bout should proceed, and a judges' conference ensues. Shonan no Umi kindly being helped from the dokyo by ringside Rikishi Aozora. Well, little medical reasoning behind that check. He said he's all right, so we'll have a match. Fantastic bravery from Shonan no Umi, a worthy samurai. But, although functional enough to put his head out of harm's way, does he remember this bout now? Should it have gone ahead? Your thoughts, please. Midori Fuji, despite his size, is never one to shy away from a head-on collision, which made his little versus large bout with Ichi no Jo that much more interesting. I tried to film what the eyes, hands and feet of the two men were doing at various points. Even if you've seen the match, I'm sure you'll spot something extra this time.
I aim to finish it a bit earlier than that, exclaimed Ichinojo between breaths. But I calmly took hold of his belt, so it was no problem. The judges were called upon again for Koto Shoho vs Takara Fuji, and deprived the youngster of a morale-boosting win by ruling that his foot had overstepped first. They then had to rule on this one. And Chief Judge Isegahama had to break the bad news to his own student. An important one that too, as Terunofuji is chasing double figures and can now only afford one more slip-up. There was little doubt though about the result of this match between leader Dai Eisho and his Sakai senior Hokuto Fuji, himself a concussion victim three years ago you may remember. That guaranteed Dai Eisho's lead for another day. My condition's good, so now it's just a question of spirit, he said. First things first, I want double figures. The final match of the day, though, also resulted in deliberation. His aggression rewarded, Shodai stays one win behind Dai Eisho, and crucially, escapes demotion to Sekiwake. Some hair-raising moments there, but once my win was confirmed and Coach Izutsu congratulated me, I think my face told you what it meant. A release from all that tension, he told reporters. That tension has been suffocating, I tell you. Now, I must try to win my final five. This is the shot I stayed behind for, a newly relaxed Shodai enjoying the stroll home to Tokitsukaze Stable with near neighbor Tochi Ozan, now coach Kiyomigata, who was on door duty at the end. So happy he didn't even notice the cold. Come to think of it, at this moment, neither did I. <laughs>